Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and this video literally took me months to make. Uh, I've been working on this in season two and then just kept tracking the changes with the game engine. Uh, and this is a different approach. It's not just a quick change these settings and you'll hear everything. Um, not knocking those approaches, but I wanted to do something different. So I'm in a fortunate situation where I have close to 80 to 100 different headsets. I've measured all of them on a measuring rig to see how they sound both from an objective standpoint and then played on them to see what I think. And then I measured the game audio, analyzing video to hear the exact frequencies of footsteps, the exact frequencies of loot crates. What sound is it when you pick up cash off the ground when you're looting in Call of Duty? Can I fix some of these things? And then how do I apply that to all of these headsets which have different audio profiles? So this video is different than my last Modern Warfare 2 EQ video, um, but I wanted to cover it to both address people that play on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, and the various headsets you may have. This is not a single EQ video for all. However, I have a couple in the beginning I'm gonna start with to help get you on the right track. Now, I don't make this content to monetize certain things or sales. I may talk about some favorites of headsets and stuff like that later, and I'll just have generic Amazon affiliate links. There are links in the description below to help support the channel, but one of the biggest thanks you can give is to subscribe if you are not already a subscriber because I'd love to see in future videos and hopefully you found this valuable. Now, a quick forewarning, I can't make sounds appear that aren't there. So this EQ stuff, all of this work is not going to magically fix everything. We still have to rely on the game engine to produce those sounds. And there have been measured uh, experiences where I expect to hear a footstep and it's completely silent. And then I go and analyze the video and sure enough, the game doesn't even send the audio clip. I can't control that. What I can do is take the sounds that are coming in and optimize them so you can hear it clearly. So as far as the tuning philosophy goes, I basically wanted to utilize the bass that Call of Duty had because Call of Duty is a very bass heavy game and a lot of the footstep noises come in the bass region. It's not like Apex where you can get rid of most of the bass and still hear things. Call of Duty is a different animal. So the way I tuned the bass is I preserved the bass that's important for footsteps and loot crates because believe it or not there's some bass down low in the loot crates but i also cleaned it up because now the less you ask the headset to do from a bass perspective the easier it is to articulate detail and higher frequencies most of these headsets aren't going to do an excellent job at handling really strong explosive bass and then still preserve the detail and pinpoint accuracy for footsteps it can kind of muddy up the mix so there is still bass with this tune it's focused on the bass that matters, and then I clean up the rest to kind of let the headset do its thing. Now, some people are using analog headsets or headphones, and because of that, I also wanted to address DAC. So I have the Astro Mix Amp because some people bought this for Xbox to use their own analog headset and still get game to chat mix. So I have custom EQ files in the description below. It's a clickable link. You can download the preset, and that'll work with a lot of headsets. I have the GSX 300 from Epos, the Sound Blaster G6, the Shit Hell 2, the Creative X5, the GSX-1000. All of these perform just slightly differently, but where I could EQ directly on the DACs, these DACs, I included that. Also on headsets like the SteelSeries Nova Pro, I have a DAC tune for a console because console cannot run sonar, and I have a sonar tune. Um, I also EQ'd first-party headsets, so the Xbox wireless headset, the Sony Pulse, the Sony InZone, and I've tested all the major brands. I mean, I literally played for like, I can't even tell you how many hours of work on gaming and lots of deaths and some good games, of course, and experimenting, but hopefully that format helps. Now the last housekeeping bits, just like my little notes and check marks uh, that I learned along the way. If you're playing on Xbox and you want to use Dolby Atmos, you can. Let's say you're using the Astro Mix Amp and you have your custom EQ here. You can use Dolby Atmos and just set it to game mode with performance mode on or off and then zero EQ on Atmos. Then you can use this. The same applies for Windows. If you're doing a custom EQ through Equalizer APO, you can still use Dolby Atmos. You just don't do both EQs at the same time. Same thing with the Nova DAX or you know the Razer headset, stuff like that. Now, Corsair's IQ software and Logitech's G-Hub add a lot of distortion when you do custom EQ. So I'm not posting screenshots of those because they, don't, they do not work well. Use Sonar from SteelSeries, which is free, 
or use Equalizer APO with the piece add-on, which I'm gonna show you here in a moment, and I'll also have links in the description for that. All right, so before we get into EQ, we wanna make sure the game audio is set correctly. So we're gonna click on settings on the top right, click on audio, and then there's a few things I wanna point out. So you have the audio mix. Now I prefer headphones the most just because of the way it processes sound, both from a dynamic range and EQ standpoint. PC technically has a tighter dynamic range, but I don't like the EQ tuning that it applies. It, it just doesn't sound as good or as full as headphones. Bass boost is a personal preference thing. They have the same dynamic range, but there's more bass on the bass boost one. Now I've seen some people post online that they're using the soundbar preset. I'm not a huge fan of it because the audio fall off. Basically, when you loosen up dynamic range from headphones to soundbar, anything past like 20 or 30 meters starts to drop off more significantly volume wise. So you don't hear footsteps or loot crates as easily as you would with the headphones mix. Again, this is a personal preference thing. It does make airstrikes quieter, but I'm more concerned with footsteps and hearing things as far as I can. Now, a key step to hearing footsteps and loot crates, especially if they're a little bit farther away, is to reduce any other noise that competes with it. So naturally, the easiest thing you can do here is getting rid of all of the music volume. I don't need guitars and yelling and all this other stuff in the background to make it harder for me to hear footsteps. So I set all of those at zero. I also reduce the dialogue volume to 20 because there, I don't need all the prompts saying that the circle is closing or anything like that shouting at me while I'm trying to hear someone sneak up or locate them in a building. So I've seen people reduce this to, to 40, but I prefer 20. It's still loud enough as long as you're paying attention and I could focus more in the game. The effects volume is the game engine audio. You don't really need to touch that. It's fine at 100. And then voice chat, this is a personal preference thing, but it comes in pretty hot, so you can reduce it quite a bit and still hear everyone fine. Going further down, there's two more changes I wanna show you. So one of them is under accessibility and it's reduced tinnitus sound. This reduces the high frequency noise from flash grenades and things like that. It just makes the audio less fatiguing and overall doesn't have any other negative effects. So I strongly suggest keeping this on. Then if you go under audio advanced settings, again, I don't like music, so I turned off juggernaut music. This is the one that is a personal preference and is highly situational, but I disabled hit marker sound effects because again, if you are shooting someone and generating hit marker sound effects, you are adding to the noise that your game is producing. And if an enemy is trying to flank you or someone's trying to third party you, then you are making it more difficult to hear that as well. So the less noise you make, the better. And in this case, none will help with that. All right, so this is what the season four EQ looks like on Sonar. And starting with the left dot, which is a low shelf. So click this drop down and make sure you click low shelving. You have negative 12 decibels at 40 Hertz with a Q of 0 0.707. If you go to the next dot, three decibel gain at 50 Hertz with a Q of two. I lifted it a little bit here because this is the primary humming sound from a loot crate. And if I drop the bass too much, they don't stand out as much. So I wanted to preserve that. I reduced the bass though afterwards because I just wanted to clean up the bass a little bit so we could focus on the footsteps. And that's negative seven decibels, 75 hertz, Q of two. Moving on to probably the most important setting here and that is the primary footstep frequency for the deeper part of the footstep. And that's a six decibel gain at 115 hertz with a Q of two. I pulled down 250 hertz just a little bit. If you have a very muddy sounding headset, something that has a lot of bass into the mids, you can reduce this further and that will clean up that boxiness or muddiness that some headsets have. Some of the better tuned headsets don't really need this reduced too much. So this is kind of an in-between tune and I did it with one uh, negative one decibel with a Q of 1.41. Moving on to the next one, we have at 720 Hertz, I did a gain of two decibels and a Q of two. And then at 1.1 kilohertz or 1,100 hertz, I did a gain of 2.5 decibels in a Q of two. I've been asked about these before because Sonar says 1.1 kilohertz, but when you type it in, you actually have to type 1,100 because it's 1,100 hertz or 1.1 kilohertz. So if you're having issues and your dots aren't lining up, just make sure that you type that incorrectly. Now this one is a special dot, and this is why I love Sonar and parametric EQ in general. So this minus five decibel notch, if you will, and we could switch this to a notch if we wanted to, but for the most part, I don't wanna cut all of the sound. I still wanted it to sound natural. So we're gonna stick with a peaking EQ for a safe tune. But this Q of 10, yes, a Q of 10, that's what's making it so narrow at 4.1 kilohertz. The cache sound, when you loot cache, it has a really high pitched 
ringing sound, almost like a zing. And on certain headsets, it can really hurt your ears. So I just targeted that point. This means that you can play at a louder volume and arguably one of the more painful sounds from day to day activity, if you will, of looting isn't going to hurt your ear as much. So we got to get rid of that here. Then lastly, we go to a small treble lift, two decibels at 8.7 kilohertz. And again, just remember you have to type 8700 hertz with a Q of 0 0.707. This lifts the upper treble because some gaming headsets don't really have a lot of upper treble. And I started at 8.7 and up because some headsets have a stronger treble at 8 kilohertz and then it tapers off. And I didn't want to make that too harsh sounding. If you think this is too much, we can adjust it. But the idea of this is to help preserve some of that airiness and sound stage that you're looking for in a headset. Now there's one feature in Sonar that's going to allow this EQ to work on a lot of different headsets, like hundreds. And that's because even though this is the general sound I like for Warzone as far as modifying a default tuned gaming headset, if you have a headset that's extremely bassy, let's say you have a Razer Kraken, for example, or you have a SteelSeries Nova 7 that has a little bit less bass but is more dominant up top, you can adjust these sliders down here. So we can preserve the curve that performs well in Warzone, but again, if you have something like a Razer Kraken or you just find that there's too much bass, I can just pull this down and now I'm preserving the curve, but I'm having less bass as a whole. So you can fine tune your sound. Conversely, if you find that the EQ that we dialed in here is not enough bass, keep those settings anyway, and then just boost it slightly and we can get the lift and that punch that you're looking for. Now, if you feel like your headset isn't really resolving enough in the mid range, it sounds kind of dark or almost like it's behind a curtain, you can adjust the voice slider as well. And boosting that will lift up that middle point of your frequency response. Something like a Drop PC 38X doesn't really need this. It's already flat and resolves extremely well in this mid-range, but stuff like, again, a Razer headset, which is more V-shaped, or even a Sony Inzone headset, for example, it'll benefit from a little bit of lift and voice. Then you move on to treble, of course, which is your highs, and that's kind of like the sparkle, you know, glistening effect, if you will, on the sound. If you need a little bit more of that ringing sound, you can just lift treble. Some people, if you listen to music for a long period of time at loud volumes, you tend to lose your treble response as you get older, so this can help compensate just a little bit. And if the headset that you're using sounds too bright or sibilant or sharp, then you can pull this down and that'll help compensate as well. Now we might as well move on to a few other features of Sonar because if we're using it for EQ, it's important to cover this. Spatial audio, just to keep it short, I did not like the results regardless of what I tried. I could still hear footsteps okay in full performance mode, but it wasn't as easy to track for me. It wasn't as precise as it was by leaving it off. So you can always experiment. I would leave it on performance mode if you turn it on and then adjust your distance, but it didn't really work too well for me. Volume boost, Call of Duty is already extremely loud and most headsets get loud enough to hurt your ears. So I would leave this off because there's a good chance you'll just increase or introduce distortion. Smart volume kind of acts like a noise gate. It does compress the sound a little bit. However, it didn't do it accurately or well enough for me to justify using it here. You're better off using the settings in Call of Duty to choose the dynamic range you're looking for. Now, if you don't want to download Sonar and use that SteelSeries app because you just don't want the resources or the other features it adds, you can use something called Equalizer APO with the Peace add-on. This is a similar idea. It's literally just a simple program that gives you parametric EQ and other features, but we're going to focus on this today. So you can see at the top here, I have the same frequencies that we put into Sonar. Feel free to pause it here if it's easier to put in settings gain values of negative 12, three, et cetera. So this all matches up what we did in Sonar and the same with the Q. Now the first and last band, just to remember, we are using a low shell filter on the left side and on the right for the treble, I am using a high shell filter. Once you've dialed this in, you can click save and then name your custom EQ of whatever you want to help you remember it. And this can also apply to multiple devices. So even if you have more than one headset, analog wireless it doesn't matter this can work on everything connected to your pc so now that we cover the game audio settings sonar and equalizer apo for your options it's time to show you the actual presets that are specific to different headset models the sonar and equalizer apo are like the broad stroke it really works on almost everything that's what took me so long to make this review is i wanted to make it compatible with a lot of stuff minimal fuss however especially on console that won't work. So all of the next parts, which will have chapters below to help save you time, will include some tuning there. Couple side notes. If you are using the Astro uh, A40s or 50s and you switch to the Wicked Cushions pad, 
uh, use that Astro EQ preset I have, but reduce the bass by several decibels, like two to three, and increase the treble by two to three to counteract the pad swap because it does have a pretty big impact on the sound. With Sony InZone, if you're using InZone's uh, own software to do custom EQ, Microsoft likes to assign the headset audio to chat by default instead of gain. So if you're applying EQ on InZone and it's not working on your InZone H7 or H9, um, make sure that your Windows audio settings is set to game and then it'll work. So with that being said, here are the custom EQs for all the DACs and various headsets. All right, so that wraps up the EQ portion, and I hope that helps improve your gaming experience. Like I said, I can't control the game engine, so if footsteps aren't there because it's not rendering it, that's what it is. But at least for the stuff that comes in, I hope this helped make your experience just a little bit better. And this has carried over for several seasons now, so I don't think that with season five coming out, there's gonna be a big change. If there is, I'll stick you a comment here or make a new video if it's drastic enough. Again, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. It helps a lot, and a lot of these brands will work with me if they see the channel grow. I bought most of the stuff you see here, so this is a dangerous hobby. But I uh, do wanna say this, if you are in the market for a new headset and you're specifically focused on FPS for games like Call of Duty, under $100, I typically prefer HyperX and SteelSeries. The Nova One is a great headset for FPS at 60 bucks, and then uh, with HyperX, the Cloud Twos and the Threes are both great. When you get from 100 to 200, if you want wireless, it's really hard to beat the Nova 7, uh, which is on sale for I think as low as 130 or 140 at the time of this review. That's a steal of a headset, has Bluetooth, game and chat mix, etc., and it's great for FPS. For the wired side, under 200, I like the ExtraFi H1 if you want to close back. Otherwise, if you're okay with an open back, the Drop PC38X or your Epos H6 Pro are my top picks. Over 200, it goes to the VZR Model 1. This is arguably the best closed back first person shooter headset I've ever played on. It images insanely well. And then if you need more bells and whistles, I really like the Stealth Pro. It's an excellent headset and the Nova Pro from SteelSeries. So Turtle Beats and SteelSeries have really good wireless performing headsets. All of these are gonna get you like 90, 95% there. Those just stand out to me as a little bit more competitive at their price points. So that about wraps up the video. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you so much for making it to the end and for all the support. I hope to see you at the next video. With that being said, stay safe out there and I'll see you next time.